We are all waiting for a cure. Where's the cure? You guys, there is so much exciting research happening right now to cure type 1 diabetes, but none of it is just around the corner. This research takes time, and that's so frustrating for those of us who have been living with this for decades, or for the families whose child was just diagnosed last week, or for the adults whose life just got turned upside down after 40 years without type 1 diabetes, and suddenly, boom, you're managing insulin injections every day. None of it's easy for anybody. I get messages and comments every week from parents and adults newly diagnosed with type one asking me, where's the cure for my nine-year-old child? They were just diagnosed and we can't live like this. Or the adult saying, what? This is like throwing my whole life inside out. Where's the cure? I get it. You see the research and you're hoping it's just around the corner. A year from now, five years from now. But guess what? In the meantime, we have to learn how to thrive with this disease. Here's what you need to know about living a full life with type 1 diabetes while we wait for a cure. First, it isn't about perfect blood sugars. The people you see in the news who are like setting records and winning the Olympics with type 1 diabetes, sure, they are working really hard and they have learned a lot about managing insulin and nutrition and blood sugars, but that's not why they are thriving. The reason they are thriving is because they did not let type 1 diabetes turn them into a victim. And even parents can turn their child into a victim by feeling sorry for themselves. The moment you start feeling sorry for yourself as a person diagnosed with type 1 diabetes, <sighs> There is no room for self-pity in type 1 diabetes. It doesn't help you, and in fact, it will hurt you. When you start feeling sorry for yourself or for your child, you are immediately creating this idea that life is unfair and something bad happened to them, so they should just kind of sit down and sulk. When you're living with a disease that affects every part of your life, hour by hour by hour, you don't have time to sit around and sulk. That is gonna help you suffer, not thrive. Instead, you have to shift and you have to realize and embrace and accept that everyone in life has challenges, including your child, including yourself, and more than one challenge, probably. Type 1 diabetes is now one of you or your child's challenges. And hey, it sucks that that came at four years old or seven years old or nine years old or 45 years old, but it happened. If you wanna get mad about the fact that it happened, okay, get mad, but get mad and then get over it because the next thing you've gotta do is accept it and start learning. And that counts for you too, parents. If you feel sorry for your child, they will feel sorry for themselves. You have to teach them and show them through your own words and actions, hey, life is hard, you're gonna struggle, and you're gonna work hard every time life gets hard to keep going and overcome this challenge and all the other challenges in your life that you're gonna face. Type 1 diabetes is just one of those challenges. My mother would call this building character, but you can also just call it reality, right? Because type 1 is gonna be a challenge not just like at the time you're diagnosed, but every day, every week, there's gonna be things that come up and they need to learn how to find that resilience and persistence to say, whew, okay, this is really hard, I'm really frustrated, I'm struggling, but I'm gonna work my way through it. If they are stuck in self-pity mode, they're not even gonna try to work their way through it. And the same goes for adults who've been diagnosed. You don't need the fanciest tech or the fanciest pump or the fanciest medications. You do need insulin. Access to insulin is key. But after that, you need resilience. You need the ability to say, hey, get up, try again, keep trying. Next, you've got to be open to learning. I've lived with type 1 for 25 years and I am still learning new things about managing my insulin doses all the time. What I knew about diabetes 15 years ago is so different than what I understand about my diabetes today. And that's only possible because I stayed open to learning every single day. I never sat down and said to myself, I've lived with this long enough, I know it all. I don't know it all. I learn helpful things all the time from other people in the diabetes community, from myself by simply stepping back and saying, whoa, my blood sugar did that when I ate that and I did that and I took that. 
Stay open to learning, but keep it light. It doesn't have to be black or white, succeed and fail. You can have this middle ground where it's like, ooh, that was a rough day. <laughs> Blood sugars were not great, but I'm gonna try again tomorrow. And if you're a parent watching this, it is critical that you teach that mindset to your children. By the way, that also means that you can't flip out when their blood sugars are high. You don't have to suffer, but you have to work hard to thrive. If your blood sugar's crashing every day, don't just endure it and say, ugh, this is life with type one, it's brutal. Look at what's happening. Ask yourself, all right, what are the different things that I have control over in this situation? What can I change to prevent that crash? Chances are you are taking too much insulin, which is, you know, secret number 47 to thriving with type one. Don't just let your doctor decide all your insulin doses and then keep taking it mindlessly without questioning it. Your doctor is guessing, which means your doses need to be adjusted and fine-tuned based on your data. If you're crashing every day after breakfast, you're getting too much insulin. If you're struggling with highs all the time and your A1C is up here and you want it to be down here, you're not getting enough insulin. Go reach out for help if you're not confident making those adjustments on your own. But don't ignore the data. Don't just say, ugh, I suck at this. It's impossible. Take it and go try something different. Thriving with type 1 diabetes is not about perfection. It's about the ability to say, okay, this is my challenge. I'm gonna rise up and do the best I can every single day. Some days my best is like, whew, not pretty. <laughs> Some days my best looks like smooth blood sugars. Just dust off and try again tomorrow. I want a cure too. And honestly, I do think that within my lifetime, maybe it's 20, 30 years down the road, there will be a cure. In fact, there will probably be multiple cure options based on the different types of our bodies or how long you've had type one or your DNA, or your genetics. There is so much happening right now. Ignore all the little skeptical conspiracy theories about big pharma trying to keep the cure out because they make so much money off insulin. They're really not not making that much money off insulin anymore. They're making all their money from GLP-1 medications. They don't need type ones to fill their pocket. Anyways, I'm hopeful for a cure, but in the meantime, I'm gonna do everything I can to thrive and live a full life. That doesn't mean perfect blood sugars. It means doing the best I can while enjoying real life. While we wait for that cure for type one diabetes, go live a full life. I know it's exhausting. That's why I wrote a book on burnout. You can find it in the show notes. You can also teach your child to be proud of their type one diabetes, proud because they have to wake up and deal with it every day. That means teaching them that they don't have to be embarrassed by it. Find this book in the show notes.